hier morgen graag 12 en welkom bij van ochtend de Afrikaanse les. Good morning, grade 12. Welcome to this morning's Afrikaans lesson. Aan die einde van die les zal jy die gedig, ek het die huisie by die see beter begryp. Jy sal vraag uit die departement van onderwijs en Afrikaans is traditionele taal vraag sal soeie van november 2017 raak en die gedig kan beantwoord en jy sal ook die instructieblad van jou vraag sal soeie verstaan. At the end of the lesson, you will comprehend the poem. It's one of your um, pet poems. I get the by the sea. You will be able to answer the questions relating to this poem from the Department of Basic Education Afrikaans First Additional Language, November 2017, um, paper two. And you will also be able to understand the instruction page of your paper two exam. I want to spend a little bit of time on the instruction page of your paper two exam. It is quite daunting at the end of the year when you receive your paper two in your exam venue and you confront it with this big exam paper. So I would like to go through that instruction page as well today. Um, right, I know, I don't know if Tadi has joined us. I know you asked me a question yesterday relating to the files on about Afrikaans. If you are, then yeah, just let me know and then I can answer that question as well. Let's have a look at the poem. Some of you would have received all 10 poems already from school. Um, if you've only received a certain amount and this one is not in your pack, um, I'm assuming you will be getting it once you return to school. At this stage, you can then just go through the poem with me and keep the notes for a later stage. So, Akita Aisi by the Seer. Akita Aisi by the Seer, this nacht, ek hoor aan een, aan een die golde slaan, teen aan die rot waarop my huisie staan, met al die oceaanse woeste kras. Ek hoor die winde huil, a kreen, a klap, Soos van verloore siele in hom moed, Al dwalen, klagen, Wat in graf en dood geen rust kon vind nie, Maar nog soek en smag. My veerkie brand, My kaasje geef sy licht, Ek hoor dan maar hoe loe die storm daar buite, Ek hoor hoe ruk die winde aan my ruite, Hier binne is dit veilig, Warm en dig. Kom nacht, Kom weer in wind, kom oceaan. Dit is a zero for my son. Okay, so I have added a translation just that you can understand what the poem is all about. So the title is I Have a House by the Sea. So I can skate or if it's silent. I have a small house at the sea. It's nice. I hear the continuous crashing of the waves against the rock on which my house stands with the entire ocean's wild power. Okay, so there's a little house. It's built on rock and the sea is surrounding it or close to it. And obviously there's a storm and the waves keep on crashing with all its power against this um, rock. Then the speaker says, I hear the winds howl, a groan, a complaint like those of lost souls in despair, all wandering, moaning, who in grave and death could find no rest, but remain seeking and yearning. So he says, outside, except for the waves crashing against the rock, he can hear the wind howling, and he's comparing the wind sound to that of lost souls, right, that didn't find any peace in death, and that are still seeking for answers here on earth. But now inside his house, how does he feel? He says, my small fire burns, my little candle gives light. I can hear the storm raging outside. I hear the wind pulling at my window. But here inside, it is safe, warm, and enclosed. Okay, so he says, inside my little house, I am absolutely safe. I've got a little fire giving me a little bit of warmth. 
I've got a candle giving me light, and even though he can hear the storm outside, he feels safe and warm within his house. And now in the last two lines of the poem, it says, come night, come weather and wind, come ocean. This is the rock upon which my little house stands. Okay, so in the last two lines, he's inviting all of nature's forces to basically attack him because he feels safe on this, in his little house, which is built upon the rock. Okay, I'm going to get into the, um, meaning of all of this in the next few slides. Um, it's the key that you must be it, is that jullie gedig is a Engelse sonnet. It's an English sonnet. You can see now the three quatrine. We've got three stanzas consisting out of four lines, and then it's on the couplet here on the end. And then we've got our couplet at the end. <coughs> Come on, let's go to the first one. Let's have a look at stanza one. It says, I get a huisie by the sea. Okay, so as we naar die titel kyk, dan kan dit letterlik en verkeerlik geinterpreteer word. You can interpret it in a literal and figurative manner. Letterlik is dit a huisie wat op a rot gebouw is. In a literal way, it is a little house that has been built on a rock that's literal. Verheerlik. Daai dit op die spreker wat sy lewe op sy geloof bou. In a figurative manner, it is referring to the speaker that builds his life on his religion. He feels he can take the onslaught of life because he is a religious person. Okay. Irregardless of the religion, he believes in his God and therefore he feels safe. So, ons kyk na die strofe, kom ons kyk net na die rhyme vertroon. Ok, the rhyme scheme, so ek het nacht, en dit rhyme het kracht, en dan het ek slaan, staan. Ok, those are rhyme. So, as ons dit neerskryf, dit is A, B, B, A. Dit is ons rhyme vertroon. When we've got A, B, B, A, we call it omarmde rhyme. Okay, um, Adam means you've got your arm around someone, so the A have the arm around the B. Okay, so this um, Adam the Ram. Here the yellow ears the strofe. Die op die gebeure buiten die huis. The whole first stanza is all about the stuff happening on the outside of the little house. So ek het die huis by die see dis nacht. The fact that it's night makes it even more scary because everything is worse in the evening and in the dark. At wer an in, an in, the call the slant. Okay, so by repeating on in, on in, for your rolling, the clinton that the unavoidable onslaught when you call them, by repeating that word on in, it is emphasizing that the wave keep on crashing against this rock. It's a continuous wave upon wave hitting against this rock. Okay, see on the road, or on the icy stone, met all the ocean to boost the craft. So with all the ocean's force. Good, let's go to the two. I wear the wind a hoil, a kreen, a klaf, so span the lower seal in the wood. Al dwaal en slaag en wat in graf en dood geen rif kon vind nie, maar ook soek en smag. Ok, so um, Luke, ek sien jy dit met gauw terug gaan. You want me to go back for five minutes? Um, if I go too fast, you guys must be safe. Um, I really don't mind to slow down. Luke, once you're done, I don't know if you're copying down notes, and this gives me the go ahead to say it's fine. You can go back. Please, guys, while um, you are um, making notes, please remember in all poems to know the theme, to know metaphors, personification, your um, comparison, and then try and use 
the same um, color. Okay, but it's easy to recognize in all of these homes. Right. Um, Luke, are you done? I really don't mind waiting. Sorry, I know I sometimes go a bit fast. Okay, fantastic. I'm going to the next slide. Good. Um, at Werdi Vindahayo, a screen, a slag, the van verloren stile, in al nood, al dwalen, klagen, wat in graf en dood geen rust kon vind nie, maar nog soek en smag. Ek is ook om eens kyk die rijm vertroon weer in. Our rhyme see. Klag, rhymes with smag, and nood, rhymes with dood. Okay, so once again, the C, B, B, C, so the rhyme vertroon is weer in, om arm de rhyme. Hierdie strofe die weer op die gebeure buiten die huis. Once again, it indicates on what's happening outside the house. Okay, so this is baie belangrik. Um, en dan sê ek hier, jylle moet nou die funksies van die um, punctuatie ken. You do need to know the functions of the punctuation in your poems as well. Hier so het ons een aandagstreep. A hyphen, but in the aandachtstreep, focus the aandacht op hoe die wind klink. It focuses the attention on how the wind sounds. So, at where the wind heil, hyphen. So, you kind of stop out of sounding. A kreen, a klag. Okay, it's a complaint. Okay, that's how it's sounding. So, sounding. so um, die aandachtstreep moet jylle weet by die functie. Nou het ons een vorm um, vir beeldspraak. Het sê hier, ek hoor die winde huil soos van verloore siele in hul moed. Nou, as soon as you see the word soos, okay, then you know that you are busy with vergelijken. You are busy with a simile or a comparison. Okay. So how does the wind sound? It sounds like, that's what Stuart means, sounds like lost souls in need. Okay. Um, jylle moet onthou, beeldspraak is moet nou die algemene term vir vergelijking, metafoor en personificatie. Okay, I said this in the previous lesson, remember, beeldspraak is the overall terminology for Metaphor, comparison, simile, and um, personification. Onthou ook, a strofe wat uit serials bestaan, word a kwatrein genoem. Okay, so stanza that consists out of four lines, we call it kwatrein. Please look at the spelling. Okay, it does not start with a Q. A lot of times I see when I'm marking that you guys write it with a Q. Please spell it correctly. Quatrain. Now, see, strofe 1 and 2 is in contrast with strofe 3. So, stanza 1 and 2 is in contrast with stanza 3. In stanza 1 and 2, focus on the storm. We focus on the storm. In strofe 3, focus on the calm. Stanza 3, we are focusing on the calm. Okay, it's, not, um, it's not the storm outside anymore. Okay, so on down now, in hierdie specific strofe, in this strofe, once again, die ruimte troon, die aandacht streep, die vergelijking, and now we're going to come the contrast. We're coming to the contrast. My fear is brand, my cash is a sailor. I wear the mud, the wind, the storm, the bite. I wear the rip, the wind on my right. The wind is the feeling, warm and dark. Okay, so weer in on the rain to throw it. Dark, rain with dark. Daar buiten, rein met ruite. So dit is E, F, F, E. 
so ein Reinvertrauen verströfet drie, ist hier umarmte Reihe. Okay, und jetzt schauen wir gau, gau nach die folgende. Das ist mein Vierke brand, mein Käschi für sein Licht. Now that the minutes of you in this poem is extremely important. I see the declining form van huisi, vierki, kaasi. Die verkleinen form beklemt toen die nietigheid van die mens teen oor die natuur elemente. So by using the diminutive of it's a little house, a little fire, a little candle, it's emphasizing that man is actually nothing compared to nature's elements. If nature's elements decide to attack man, right, by a storm or a tornado or a huge fire, it destroys everything. Okay, so that's what it's trying to emphasize here. Okay, so in a literal manner, the ocean, um, the wind, the ocean's force is powerful against man, little house, little fire, little candle. Okay, so this is the longer. Then here I give so my cash is here sailor. It was a no for a fan beel sprot. We get a metaphor. We got a metaphor. We can look at the other the right path by. Okay, so the metaphor here, yes, literal. Okay, the candle gives light in the little house. But in a figurative manner, the metaphor is saying that the person believing, the believer, should show other people the right path they should follow in life. Okay. Dan it ek hier te sê weer in hierdie specifieke strofe, duid het op die gebeure binnen die huis. In this stanza, it's about what's happening inside the house. So that is also in contrast. Ek het nou weer hier te sê strofe 3 in contrast met strofe 1 en 2. Stanza 3 is in contrast with stanza 1 and 2. Remember I said stanza 1 and 2 is the storm. Stanza 3 is the calmness, the storm and kalmte. But also stanza 1 and 2, wat gebeur buiten die huis? In strofe 3, wat gebeur? Binnen die huis. So in stanza 1 and 2, what's happening outside the house? Stanza 3, what's happening inside the house? In jullie strofe, het ons ook een vorm van klank na boodsing. Ek hoor hoe looi die storm daar buiten. Hierdie woord is een mooi woord. Jullie moet hem gebruik en jullie opstelle. Use a word like that that you get from your poetry in your essays. The storm is howling outside when you're writing an essay. Die storm looi daar buiten. Right, it's such a nice word, descriptive word to use in an essay. And then, die gehoorsintheid speel een belangrike rol. Your hearing sense in this poem plays a very important role because everything that he hears, ek hoor die storm, ek hoor die winde rik aan my ruite. Okay, so in hierdie strofe, die heet af weer, klank na boodsing, die verkleiningsvorm, en die contrast in jou gehoorsintheid. Dan is ons by die laatste um, strofe, die couplet. So as we kijk, I just first want to have a look at the rhyme scheme. Dus oceaan staan, so ons rhymepatroon hier is far rhyme. We've got our rhyming couplet at the end of this poem. Ons kijk weer na die leefteken, the punctuation, ons het weer een aandacht streep. Hy sê, kom nacht, kom weer en wind. Kom oceaan, so die aandacht steek, focus die aandacht op die rede, hoe kom die spreker die elemente uitdaag. Die nou, the speaker is trying to focus the reader's attention on why the speaker is inviting the element to bring all their forces. Why can they do it? Then say, um, say I see on op a rock, um, and this is a canoe. 
Okay, I see someone said, what was the third stanza about, Kale? And um, the third stanza is about how Faith he feels in his little house. So stanza one and two was about the storm outside. First of all, stanza one, the waves crashing against his house. Stanza two, the wind howling outside his house. And then stanza three is about him inside his house with his little fire, with his little candle that gives him some heat and some light, and that he feels safe inside his house. Okay, that is stanza um, three. Now stanza four, this last um, rhyming couplet, is about him inviting um, the elements to come and attack because he feels safe. He is in his little house. Okay, so come on, let's go net nog verder. Ons het rot, dit is a rot for my eyes, it's on this ook a metaphor. It's also a metaphor. Die rot is die sprekerse geloof. The rock is standing for the speaker's religion. In huisi, my huisi, is indicating die sprekerse lewe. It's a metaphor for the speaker's life. Okay, so yes, in a literal manner, you can see this poem, my little house is standing on this rock close to the ocean, there's a storm outside, but I feel safe in my house, the storm can, can come because my house is built on a rock. However, in a figurative manner, the storm outside is referring to the storms that we face in life. Um, and because our life is built on our religion or what we believe in, we can stand strong because we have our religion to fall back on. Okay, so that's what this poem is. Um, um, if you look at it, I think it's okay, cake. Can I even? Um, right, okay, Jaden. I will answer you, I'll answer you now, then I'll can email you the stuff. I don't have a problem emailing you the stuff. I'll give you my email address shortly. Oh, okay, it is on YouTube today. Great. And um, Jaden, will that help if the lesson is on YouTube? Um, then you can go and have a look. And guys, um, under the Afrikaans FAL file, by the end of the week, all my lessons will be there as well, the slides show as well as recording. So, Tadi, I've answered your question. I did ask about that. And um, so then you guys can just go and have a look. I specifically followed up on that because I was concerned that there was nothing there. However, they promised me they've recrunned everything and by the end of the week, it should be uploaded. Um, on Tuesday or Monday, when we've got lessons again, if there's still nothing, you must please let me know and then I can follow up again. Okay, let's just get back to our poem. Und hou ons thema en sê geloof is die rot waarop jy jou lewe moet bou, so dat jy die aanslaaf van die lewe kan aanseer. So the theme of this poem, remember I said you need to know the theme of all of your poems and um, your theme is that your religion is based on the rock, your religion is the rock, and um, that you should build your life upon, that you can handle the attacks of life. Let me just do that in English again, I've got a little bit muddled there. So your religion is the rock, that you should build your life upon, that you can handle whatever life brings you. Okay, we can even see it in our situation now. If you have something you believe in, maybe this attack of COVID-19, um, you can handle it better because you've got your religion. Okay, and then he's stemming the tone of this poem is inspiring. It should be inspiring. Okay, because it's telling you, you should build your rock, your house, your life on something, right, that you can handle whatever life um, brings. You. Come on, come further. Okay, so I will not go for the reading instructions last time. I need to explain something. At the end of the year or in prelims, if you write a provincial paper, an exam paper is handed out, and that specific exam paper 
is approximately 40 pages. And it is very daunting when you get this big exam paper, it's like a book, right? And you go, I don't know what to do. And they're not, they don't, they're not allowed to actually explain the instructions to you at the end of the year. And it causes a lot of anxiety. I know from my matric classes, I explain it to them beforehand. And even despite the fact that I've explained it to them beforehand, when they are confronted with this exam paper at the end of the year, it does cause a little bit of anxiety. So I'm just going to go through the instruction page before we get to the questions. If we don't finish the poem, the questions related side, I will continue that on Monday. I'll just add it to my next lesson. But this is important to go through. So that exam paper is handed out and it says on the instruction page, Lees all the instructions on dag dag dier voordat jy die vraag beantwoord. You have to read the instructions before you answer the question. Now look at instruction number one. Moenie probeer om die hele vraag self te lees nie. Raad pleeg die inhoudsopgave op die volgende bladsy en merk die vraagnommers van die vraag oor die tekste wat jy hier die jaar bestudeer het. Lees hier die vraag en kies die vraag wat jy wil beantwoord. Ok, so it says here, do not read the whole question paper. There's no way you can read through a 40 page question paper um, and then still try and answer it. Um, it says you need to look at the content page on the next page and then you have to mark the question numbers regarding the questions on the text that you have done this year. Okay, so you are in the, you now have to remember at the end of the year, the whole country is writing Afrikaans paper too. Okay, but not all schools have done what you have done at your school. At my school, we do philosophy, the drama, and we do the poetry. At another school, they are doing the short stories and poetry. At another school, they might be doing the novel and um, the poetry. So don't feel like you have to answer everything. Okay, you're only going to do what you have done at your school in terms of text work. So it says here, hier die vraag sal bestaan uit vier afdeling. It's got four sections, afdeling A die roman, afdeling B die drama, afdeling C die kort verhale, in afdeling B die gedichte. So we've got four sections in this paper. Section A is the novel, section B the drama, section C the short story, and section D your poetry. Now it says, <coughs> beantwoord twee vraag, een vraag uit elke van die twee afdeling. Now this is where panic starts happening. It says, answer two questions one question from two sections. Okay, so if you've done a roman, if you've done the novel, you are going to answer the question on the novel that you have done. If you have done the drama, you are going to answer <coughs> the questions relating to the drama. If you have done the short story, you will answer the question on the two short stories. If you've done the short stories at your school, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry, um, I've got a frog in my throat this morning. If you've done short stories at your school, you will answer the questions on both the short stories. And then after in there is your poetry. Once again, there will be two poems and you will answer the questions on both the poems. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go through the rest because that's just your normal writing you see and whatever. So this is now how it looks. <coughs> it changes, it changed slightly. But let's say you have done Lean for Long Song Schooner. Then you are doing 35 um, marks on Lean for Long Song Schooner. My school, we've done Fila for Kids. You will do the 35 marks on philosophers. Then if you've done the short story, you are answering 
both the short stories. And if you have done the poetry, you will answer both the poems. Mason, and um, there's no unseen poetry um, in the Department of Basic Education exam papers at the end of the year at all, and um, only your seen poetry. And um, otherwise, you might as well be traumatized if you had to do an unseen Afrikaans poem. So, no unseen poetry at all. Okay, so, and then you get the little page that looks like this in your exam paper. It says, Gebruik die controle leid om te verseker dat jy die vereiste getal vraag beantwoord. And this also kind of throws you guys. Um, all they say is that you have to pick what questions you're answering for yourself. Okay, so if you do the novel, you tick, but it's in the question paper, it's not in your answer booklet. You must just know I need to do the novel or I need to do the drama and the short stories, what you have to do. But please, you have to, if you do short stories and the poetry, you have to answer on both the short stories and both the poems. Okay, and it's out of two sections. But please don't do the wrong section. Okay, don't start because I've had kids in the past that start at the beginning of this question paper and they try to finish it and it's not going to happen in two hours. They will never ask you anything that you haven't done. Okay, so you only do what you have done at your school. Okay, so come on, take a Let's have a look if we can go through the question. And um, let's see, so, is the correct answer I did this in hockey? Op grond van die strofe bou, kan a man say that hier die gedicht a voorbeeld van vrye vers of an Engelse sonet is? Okay, so now I've told you this, um, but <coughs> if we look at the stanza layout, strofe bou, then is it an Engelse sonet, an English sonnet. Waarom speel um, hier die gedicht specifiek in die nacht af? Why does this poem um, play off at night? Okay, this verstaart die gevoel van vrees. It enhances the feeling of fear. Dan sê dit, um, hoe beklem toen? Die spreke die aanhoudende beweging van die volwe. Okay, how does the speaker emphasize the continuous movement of the waves? Die deur die herhaling van die woord on een. By repeating the word on een. Dan sê een van vier, voltooi die volgende paragraaf, deur die woorde en die leid hieronder te gebruik. Kryf slaks die woord langs die vraag nummer nie. So they only want you to write down the word, right, and then they, um, <coughs> that's all you do, you don't write out the whole paragraph. So the say is so, in strofe 1, raak die leeser daarvan bewis, dat die sprekerse huisie op a watse type plek staan, a beskermende, bekende, eenzame of gevaarlijke plek. Is it in a safe place? Familiar place, lonely place, or dangerous place. It's a gevaarlijke plek. Dan uit strofe 3, kan a mens afblij dat die streke die huisie nog kans achter, beskermende plek ervaar. In stanza 3, a person can derive that the speaker's little house is standing in a safe place. Ketia, I have to come back to you on what the paper is. I mentioned it on the first slide and I'm scared I'm going to give you the wrong answer in terms of what paper this is because I've been using so many various papers. Um, so I'll have to go back to the first slide. So after this lesson on YouTube, you can go and have a look on that first slide. Um, what you'll know after today's lesson, I have mentioned what paper it is, but I'm just scared if I speak off my heart and I'm going to refer you to the wrong paper. So if you can go back and have a look, I would appreciate it. Otherwise, on Monday, I can give you an answer. I just don't want to go all the way back to my first slide. Okay, kids. Yeah, but I will get back to you if you don't come right. Just remind me on Monday, please. Okay. Um, then, come on, come further. Now, three aparte words I'd like to Waarmee die wind te geluid 
describe for the three separate words from stanza two that describe the wind sound, the three aparte words, the separate words. So, and see, that's for three marks. Nice three marks. Oil, groeien, glass. Okay, that's how they describe the wind. A cry, a moan, a complaint. Okay, dan vraal hy nou precies wat ek verduidelik he. Wat symboliseer die verkleining vorm? Vierkie en kersie en strofe 3. What does it symbolize? The diminutive of vierkie en kersie. The die op hoe weerloos die huis is. Teen oor die storm. It indicates that this house um, is actually not as strong against the storm. Okay, that the storm can actually break the house. Weerloos. Hoe kom er haal die spreker my en ek in versal 9 en 11? Why does the speaker repeat the um, pronoun me or my and I in lines 9 to 11? That maak die sprekerse ervaring meer persoonlik. It makes his experience more personal. En dan nummer 8, verwijs na reels 11 en 12, refer to lines 11 en 12, Wat er woord sou een mens in die plek van die komma vind, aan die einde van versel 11 kon gebruik. Nou, a semicolon, I'll just put in a function, a bit of language as well. A semicolon function is that it often stands in the place of a conjunction. So die komma vind kan in die plek van een voegwoord staan. Just know that for language purposes as well. Okay, so the semicolon can stand in the place of a conjunction, and this one, you could have replaced it with the conjunction more. Okay. Dan hier die vraag, wat vier punt betaal, moet jylle allemaal recht kry. I want you all in an exam, if you are confronted with the match the column question, and it's about your poetic devices, I would love it for you all to get it right, because it's studying and it's easy marks to gain. These are the marks that you want to um, get as many as. Okay, so kijk hier kies die aanhaling in kolom B om by die letterkindige aspek in kolom A te pas. So find the quotation in kolom B to match the poetic device in kolom A. Okay, so Edian is, and then I just want you to write down the letters again. So you'll write nine. Point one point nine A and then a big whatever D next to it or whatever it is. Okay, I'll just um do lines because I don't have space to write down everything. So Asunansi, you know Asunansi is the Arvalan van Vukala. Assonance is the repetition of vowels, and you can see it very clearly here. So that would be D. Alaterasi. Alliterasi, you guys know, is the repetition of the consonant. So you look, they've even indicated it here. So done is fear. But I told you today, you look for the word suet. If you see the word suet, you know that that is the vergelijking. So then that will be A. And then contrast. Where do Louis de Storm or Weiter? Hier binnen is dit veilig. Okay, do you hear the howling storm outside? As opposed to inside, it is safe. Okay, so this is a nice four mark that you should all just get in, at the end of the if they ask a question like this. Dan nummer 10, wat is so het rein vind ons in die couplet? What type of rein scheme do we find in the couplet? This is paar rein. En dan, kies die correcte antwoord. Wat is die boodskap van die gedicht volgens die slotgesproke? What is the message according to the um, rhyming couplet? Die spreker is veilig die een letterlijke en verkeerlijke storm. The speaker is safe against literal and figurative storms. Nummer 12. Die slotstrofe skep die indruk dat die spreker vol selfvertrouwe is. Selfvertrouwe mean self Confidence. Who can I speak at it? Rah and for self to throw out to How does the speaker in the 
um, rhyming couplet at the end, manage to sound confident. Okay, so I see so the speaker mooi die wind, en oos jy aan uit, om al mag teen sy huis te sit toe. He invites the wind, the ocean, the forces of nature to try his house, um, to use his power and to see if his house is going to be fine in the end. Okay, so wat het ons nou vandag geleer, ons hou, hy sê by die see, is a Engels of the net. It's an English sonnet, hou dit asjeblief, en maak seker dat jy al die beeldspraak kan identificeer. It's important to be able to identify your figures of speech, and I didn't add it here, but I also think it is very important that you understand the literal and figurative meaning of Heisie by the sphere in this specific poem. Dan in my volgende les, oh, oh, hier is a link wat ek julle wil sê, ek is die kitten die link, I forgot about the link. If you go to um, this link, it is the song. Someone has um, taken the poem and used the words and composed the song. Go and have a listen to it. Um, this gives you a better idea. It might sound better than me reading the poem. And it's good to just listen to a bit of Afrikaans music every now and then as well. Um, so go and listen to um, the song. And this is my nofa lakar madiliki to lyster. And then you can actually, maybe if you do the poem at home, somewhere the song sticks to your head and then you remember it a little bit easier. Okay, so next week, I'm doing it, I'm starting off. Um, Jason, um, next week, I am going to do another two poems. I'm going to focus on Heiska in Bookmark. And then I would actually like to do, well, spend two lessons on how to write an essay. Okay. Um, how to um, how to write an essay that I also think um, is important. Right. Um, so I would like to pay attention on how to write an essay as well in next week's lesson because I do, that's also a lot of marks, and I don't think you always know how to approach um, writing an essay. So next week it's going to be Heiska, it is going to be Bookmark, it is going to be how to approach an essay, common mistakes we come across when marking these essays. So I hope you will join me again for um, next week's lesson, and hopefully you learn from this. Um, and you, you um, gain some information <laughs> during lockdown. And guys, please follow us on the various social media platforms. At Tardy, I hope you find the information towards the end of the weekend on that Afrikaans file. And then you must have a lovely weekend. You need to keep safe. Kyle, Tardy, Luke. I'm all for Yella. Thank you that my lace by for Bernard. Thank you for joining me in today's lesson. And then I will see you on Monday morning at 8 o'clock. Keep safe, keep warm, and look after yourself. Sending you all lots of love, even though I don't know you guys. Okay, keep well, guys. Bye.